Well, hello, hello, hello again. I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, and it truly is my pleasure to bring you this encouraging word today that then leads into a prayer and also leads into some application. So let's go ahead, jump right in and bow with me if you would. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you. We thank you for loving us. We thank you for covering us. We thank you for keeping us. We thank you for comforting us. We thank you for filling us. We thank you for satisfying every single need. We thank you, oh God, for hearing us. And we thank you for being present. We thank you for looking after us and preparing a place for us and, and keeping us in everything that we go through. Thank you for being a way maker and a miracle worker. Thank you for being our promise keeper. Thank you for being the light in the darkness. Thank you for being truth everlasting. Thank you for being in the midst of our storms and in the midst of every single fiery furnace and every single lion's den. God, we thank you for just encouraging our hearts and our minds and our souls as we continue to move forward in this journey of life knowing that you already have us in the palm of your hand. You already know our end before the beginning. You always keep pushing us to do more, to be the best that we can and recognizing that because you created us, you know every single detail and you have our best interest at heart. We're gonna continue to bless you, God. We're gonna honor you, but we ask that your word be so revel revelatory today, that it be related to our situation that we can not only apply it, but we will run with it. We will eat it up. We will continue to move forward in it. God, we love you and we thank you for this message today. It's in Jesus name that we do pray and give you thanks. Amen. Well, God bless each and every one of you. And I thank you for being here with me. I thank you for each and every one of you that have subscribed to this channel, like this channel, and continue to listen to this channel. I appreciate you. I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you honestly, when I started doing this message, I didn't write it out nice and neat. You're going to get a lot of what I would have put in here, and hopefully it won't be too much for you, but I appreciate you being here. So I'm going to jump right into the word. If you remember, we are in the Beatitudes. We're looking at glimpses of heaven. And this is part four, I believe, part four of glimpses of heaven. So I'm going to jump right in. We're in Matthew chapter number five, beginning at verse one, and we're going to verse 12. It says, when he saw the crowds, he being Jesus, he went up on a mountain and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to teach them saying, the poor in spirit are blessed for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. Those who mourn are blessed for they will be comforted. The gentle are blessed for they will inherit the earth. Those who hunger and thirst after righteousness are blessed for they will be filled. The merciful are blessed, for they will be shown mercy. The pure in heart are blessed, for they will see God. The peacemakers are blessed, for they will be called sons of God. Those who are persecuted for righteousness are blessed, for the kingdom of heaven is theirs. You are blessed when they insult and persecute you and falsely say every kind of evil against you because of me. Be glad and rejoice because your reward is great in heaven. For that is how they persecuted the prophets who were before you. If you recall, we have been talking about glimpses of heaven, and this is part four of the series of glimpses of heaven. And I'm excited about this one. Now, just as a review, Matthew chapter number five. Now in the previous, I read it either from the King James version or the New International or the New King James. But today I read it from the Holman Christian Standard. But if you recall in part one, we talked about blessed are they that, or blessed, let me just say blessed, which is happy or to be fortunate. And I have identified that I wanted to remind you that it is a trait that comes from within. It's uh, basically from the will of God. It's not caused or affected by outside circumstances. Your happiness, your blessedness, your fortunateness is not based on outward, but it's based on what God has done. It's a trait of God. He's done it from within. So the first one, the first of the series is called 
poor, but not poor. It's blessed are the poor in spirit for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And we talked about poor in spirit. They were unable to supply their own need. They were emptying themselves. The whole point was that they would empty themselves of the pride, the self-sufficiency, the self-reliance, that they would empty themselves of all of that and then rely on God. They would make room for God to intervene, not only his sufficiency, but also his strength is what we're looking for. And so because of that, then his grace is what opens the door to the kingdom. But then part two we talked about was blessed are they that mourn for they shall be comforted. The mourning there could be related to sin in your life, that grief that you get because you did sin, or it could be grief from other people passing away or leaving a void but the whole purpose is that you're blessed when you mourn because you're seeing the purpose of sorrow and suffering you recognize that it has something that you're going to get out of it that allows you to be blessed it means that any calamities or any tragedies that you go through become a stepping stone for you to the heart of God as well as his comfort too And then the third one that we did was blessed are the meek or called mind your meekness. That was last week, the meek or the gentle, because you then end up humbling yourself and setting aside your will and your preferences for the grace and the greatness of God. So those were three. If you missed any of them, poor but not poor, promised comfort, or mind your meekness. All of those are available. But for today, part number four, it's at the table. It's at the table. You see, he says, blessed are you if you hunger and you thirst after righteousness, for you shall be filled. Hunger, let me just give you a definition, is when you are hungry, you're famished, you could be starved. When we talk about food, and we know what hunger is when it comes to food, but it relating to something that is not food, it's to long for something, to long for, to desire. When you are, in our case, desperate for the word, desperate, or you're going to beat down the doors of the church house because you're trying to get in. Not that you just sashay in, you know, any any old time, late, Johnny come lately, if you would, but you are there before it opens up because you're in need of something. You hunger after it or thirst. You feel dry. You feel parched. And it says that you have a desire that is just like you want it. You are in need of something when you come into the sanctuary. This is what we as preachers says. You're pulling on the anointing. You're pulling because you want something desperately. And I had an opportunity to share with some of the ladies in my women's group This morning, I was telling them that when you come in, you know, and you uh, do a message or you prepare a message that sometimes you feel like you left some things out when you look at your notes after the fact, but sometimes it's because the people who it was meant for didn't show up. But the Bible records for us that Jesus is saying these in these Beatitudes, he's saying you are blessed when you're hungry when you're desperate for the word, when you're thirsting after us, when you're parched, you're dry, you're seeking after this righteousness. He said, you're seeking after what is just and what is righteous. In other words, it's a conformity to the claims of a higher authority and stands in opposition to lawlessness putting it in our terms that we can understand. It's not just any authority. It's not just a higher authority. We're going to put it this way. We state the commands of God. We stand by those commands. And those are what test the judgment of whether we did right or we did wrong. It's all about our character, but it's also about our conduct as well as our actions. It's about our disposition or our attitude. It's about the internal 
as well as the external. It's not just the rituals. Did you get your check mark because you came to church? It's about did you allow it to then be ingested in your heart? It be written on the tables of your heart? Did you internalize the word? And are you committed to doing something different because of what you heard? Oh, we faith comes by hearing, but what we're hearing is that word. But if we don't apply that word, we won't see victory in our life. We won't get the freedoms that we are promised. We won't have the abundant life if we're not walking in it. I always say, put feet to your faith so that you can walk victoriously. But if you are not going to let your lips and your hips line up, then are you going to really get the outcome or the results that God promises based on his principles? He says, you're blessed when you're hungry for it, when you're desiring it. You're blessed when you're thirsting for it, when you're, you can't be satiated because of it. And you're looking for righteousness. You want God's command. You want God's words. You want God to be pleased in everything that you do. He said, you are going to be filled. You're looking for it. I told you it's at the table. If you remember back in the day, they used to have the smorgasbord. We don't really see a lot of those buffets today, if you would, uh, because of the pandemic. But um, there was a place that you could go and the, the name is escaping me right now, but you could go and the table would be spread. Everything would be there. You can even go to Buddy Freddy's too, but the one I'm thinking of was way back old school. You could go in and you would have all of the desserts. You would have the salads. You would have the meats. You would have the starches. You would have everything, the fruits, the vegetables, everything that you would want would be there. Now, no, there was no way you could fill up your plate and eat every single thing or even taste every single thing that was on that smorgasbord, but you knew when you left there, you were going to be filled. That's what God's word is like. Whatever you need, it's in it. Enough is at the table. Peace is at the table. Joy is at the table. Encouragement is at the table. Comfort is at the table. Faith building is at the table. To know that he cares and he loves you, it's at the table. All of it's at the table. Victory is at the table. Freedom is at the table. Whatever you need, it's at the table. He says, you will be filled. When I looked up filled, you will be fed satisfied, you will have more than enough. But guess what? It's done when you look at this word filled in the Greek, it's in the passive tense. It says it's being done on the outside. It's a journey to spiritual growth that never ever ends. Let me say it to you this way. I always thought practically I wanted to make sure that I was filled and I would be in my practice. I would, as I was teaching theology, make sure I listened to different people in the morning. Part of my devotion, I would be fed by other pastors. And I'm not afraid to tell you those pastors and, you know, they, they really did. They did a lot of good to me. If there are those who are preaching and teaching the word, and we all have our own calling, we all have those that are called to listen to us. So I'm not afraid to tell you them so that you would go run off. I'm going to just tell you who I listen to. Um, in the mornings for practical application, I'm going to listen to Joyce Meyer. I'm okay with that. I love the application because we need to apply the word. But I also listen to Pastor Darius Daniels, and I should say Dr. Darius Daniels, his doctorate is in leadership. I listen to him. He gives a good word. He breaks down the word. You can walk through it. I listen to Pastor Stephen Furtick as well. If you want a theological approach, Dr. Dozier, I'll give you that. Dr. Thomas L. Dozier or Dr. David Jeremiah, he's going to give you and break down that word so much so, giving you the practical application. Each of them have their own style in presenting but all of them are going to give you the word, the meat of the word. They're going to give you the true word of God. They're not going to water it down for you. They're not going to eisegete the text or what we call in hermeneutics. We're not going to place into it what they want to say. They're going to exegete it. They're going to tell you exactly what the word says. Sometimes you get the Greek and the Hebrew. Sometimes you'll get the etymology of the word. Sometimes you'll get all of that, which is good. Now, some of us like me, I'm going to want to know all those details. But unless they make it relatable for you, 
you're not going to be able to run with it. And they all do. They all do. So there are several that I listen to, and I've given you some of those names. I could add to that uh, the John Hagees of the world, the Tony Evans, the T.D. Jakes. If I want encouragement and to be motivated to move forward, yes, he's going to break down the word, but he's going to give me more of the motivation side of it. Tony Evans is really going to break down the word, give me the application as well. But all of those are good. The fact of the matter is this. I don't have to chew up the meat and spit out the bones. I don't have to worry about them falsifying the information to fit whatever they want. I don't get that from any of those. So yes, go listen to them. But what I'm saying to you is this, my desire to feed on the word is not going to only be limited to what I'm able to garner from my own study. I'm going to put it before others, allow them to feed me where I can passively hear and listen and read the word and study the word and think about the word and contemplate the word, see the observation from a different perspective or vantage point, but understand that the interpretation needs to be the same. And I know I said a lot there. So, but for those of you who have been my students before, you'll know and you'll recognize all of that that I just broke down. But don't worry about it if you're not. It's okay. What it's saying in this passage is you are happy, you are fortunate when your desire cannot be satisfied unless you're growing spiritually. That's where we all need to be. And I recognize that you might be in a place where you can't get out. Uh, either because of the pandemic, because you're in a hospital room, because you can't get to other people and you can't find the right word, but there's a way. And I am so thankful that YouTube has allowed us to have an opportunity to find and to seek out these people who are giving us the true word of God, that God said, I'm going to expand your territory. And that's what he's done. I used to always ask the question of the Lord, why am I continuing to be filled by all of these people before I get myself out the bed in the morning, before I do my own devotion? Why do I feel the need to have so much of this poured into me? And what I got from him years ago was because I was pouring out so much. I'm wondering if you have a a desire to want to know more about the word. I'm going to tell you, honestly, this made me want to study more. So yes, Go to school, go to theological school, learn as much as you can. Never stop learning. Why? Because you can never exhaust the scriptures and what God is saying about his character. See him at that level. Let me just remind you, David encouraged himself in the Lord. Read 1 Samuel chapter number 30, verse 6. He said, they were coming after me. They were getting ready to stone me because everything was taken away, including our children, including our our supplies, all of that was taken away. But the Bible says he strengthened himself in the Lord. He encouraged himself in the Lord. And if you need encouragement, it's there in the word. Told you it was in at the table. But you can also be reminded, come here, centurion. You wanted your servant to be healed. You got that. Uh, Jairus, you want your daughter to be healed. You got that. Woman with the issue of blood, come here, tell and testify that you got what you needed because you went to him. Zacchaeus, you climbed up and you got your salvation to your entire house because you wanted to hear him. Everybody who came, even the lepers, they were cleansed. The people who were sick, they were healed. Those that were lame, they started walking. Those that were blind, they started seeing. Anybody who had a desire when they came to Jesus, when they came to the truth, when they came to the word, when they came to God, they were filled because they came. Be it unto you, according to your faith, they were filled. Nicodemus, he came to the teacher for understanding and for teaching, even though he came at night. You come for understanding, you come for knowledge, you can come for all of those things from the word and it's there. So what I'm trying to tell you, grace is at the table, forgiveness is at the table, love is at the table, peace is at the table, knowledge is at the table, revelation is at the table, information is at the table, transformation is at the table, revelation is at the table, whatever you are hungering and thirsting for, which is according to righteousness, it's in the word of God, it's at the table. 
So let me just tell you what I wrote to say to you today that try to kind of sum it up. It's not about you getting a check mark to say that you were in service or you read your Bible or you quoted a scripture today. It's about getting a checkup for your spiritual growth and health. It's not just for information that you come to the word, but it's for revelation and ultimately for transformation of you. It's not just the outside, but it's the inside that matters. It's for the practical application so that you can walk powerfully in this life. It's so that it can relate it to your life so that you can then be able to reveal or get that revelation of what you're supposed to do next. You want to be good which is the outward, but more importantly, you want to see God more, which is the inward. You don't want to just walk victoriously, as I would say, put feet to your face so that you can walk victoriously, <laughs> but you really want to walk worthy of the calling that he has on your life. And I wrote this one down and we're still trying to research what the quotation is or what the terminology is in hermeneutics and you really don't need to know that, but get this understanding. You don't wanna just quote the word. You want it to be, you know, it doesn't have to be word for word. You want to have mastery enough of what it means on the inside of you so that even if it comes out with a different word, the understanding of what God has placed on the inside, that interpretation never changed, but your application may be a little bit different. So it might not be the exact words, but it is applied exactly the same. The sense is still yet there. It's the spirit that gives life. In the Old Testament, we had the, the Pharisees and we had the Sadducees, the religiosity of the day that were putting so many extra commands on the people. And Jesus came in and says, you know, it's not those rituals and those doctrines that you're trying to force feed on people that's going to get them to love God. It's about the spirit behind it. What you need, whatever you're desperate for, whatever has you parched, just know that the quenching, the food, the satisfaction can be found in the word to fill you to overflowing. And it's not just in the desperate moments that we need God or we need his word or we need his truth. It's in every moment of the day. My practice to be filled every morning before I get out of bed, I'm listening to others. So whatever you have on your plate, when you think about being full, I was going to say meat and potatoes and veggies, but instead, let me say it this way, because so many people are now more plant-based. Your protein is on the table. Your starch is on the table. Your vegetables are on the table. Your fruits are on the table. All of it is on the table. So come and be filled. There's no need for you to lack or want for anything. It's in the word. It's in the word. Let's bow. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you that whatever we need, you've already provided. Even when we don't see the end, we thank you that you do. And you know what we need to get to the other side. When we see to the corner, as we say, you see around the corner and you fill that void, that God gap with the things that we need to fill us up so that we can run a little while longer. We say 99 and a half just won't do. That's why we're striving for 100. That's why we need the spiritual growth to never stop in our life. That's why we need to get to the word, no matter what our situation. If we're in the hospital and we're sick in our body, we come looking for you to heal us. We want your report, not the report of anybody else. We know that your word tells us that life and death is in our tongue. And so we want to speak life to every situation. But the only way we can speak life is just like the disciples said, Lord, why would we leave you? You're the one that has the words of life, eternal life, abundant life to get us to our next in this life 
God, we need you. We need you so much so that we hunger after you. We feel like we're starving sometimes, but we just know we can come to your word. Help us to run to your word, run to read it, run to study it, run to listen to it, run to apply you. Sometimes we're so thirsty, we're so parched that we, we can't make it without you. Help us to run to that too, Lord, knowing that you will fill us. <laughs> and you said on the inside, it would be like living water that would overflow from our bellies if we really just know you. So Father, we come asking you to fill us yet again when we thirst, when we're hungry. Help us to come to the table the Lord's table, for the table is spread and the feast is awaiting us for whatever we need. Some of us come with situations, God, that seem very unbearable. But we only see today. Help us see the forest, not just the trees. Some of us coming thinking that, Lord, the determination by judges or the outcome by the law is unjust. So we come to you, our righteous judge, asking you to make wrong things right, asking you to put it in the right place, God, asking you to show us a better end than the one that we saw at the beginning, to have a future hope, like you say in Jeremiah 29, 11, a hope for our future, an expectation that something good is there because you know you've created us, you've made us. Thank you, Lord. That no matter where we come in today, in the hospital, if we come in just looking, if we come in trying to scrutinize, if we come in looking for the right word, combined quotation, I don't know, census plenor, I don't know. God, whatever it is that we are coming for, Give us today, this daily bread, this spiritual food that we are so in need of. We need you. We lay down self-reliance and pride and arrogance. We lay down self-sufficiency and we ask that you fill us. Your sufficiency, god this is what we need. And we thank you because your grace is more than sufficient and your eyes are always looking out for us. You are truly our Jehovah Jireh. You always provide whatever it is that we need. So we thank you. We bless you. We honor you for your greatness, your excellency, for you being our champion. We honor you for your miracle working power your courageousness in pushing us to do what we should always be doing. Thank you for being trustworthy and faithful <laughs> to a fault. Thank you, God, for loving us better than we could even love ourselves. It's in the wonderful, matchless, magnificent name of Jesus the one that was our true example to show us everything, the truth that sets us free. It's in his name, by his authority, based on what you called him. <laughs> we come because of him. That's the name that we pray in. And we ask that it be done to us based on the use of that name, it's in his name that we pray and give you thanks, amen. Well, it has been my true excitement and desire and encouragement to bring you this word, just to say thank you for listening, but most of all, thank you for applying this word. And if you really wanna get more application in the podcast, the follow-up for this, you're going to get how you can apply this, how you can truly quench that thirst, how you can truly be satisfied, that hunger for more spiritual food, how to get it in those applications. And it does come later, but guess what? Just 
receive this word. There's more than enough at the table. Just receive it that no matter what you're in need of, God's got it. He's got you. It's been my pleasure. I'm Dr. Shante Haynes with Heart to Heart Truth Ministries. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your week. And don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Go ahead, leave me a comment as well about today's message. Make sure you bless somebody else. Have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. You can find us online at h the number two h truth.org. At Heart to Heart Truth Ministries, we're helping believers live an abundant life based on God's word, standing on his promises, walking out his principles, sharing with God's people, serving as unto the Lord.